Tonight, facing growing pressure, President Biden's health secretary insisted the administration is looking at every option to protect abortion rights. There is no magic bullet, but if there is something we can do, we will find it and we will do it. Secretary Javier Becerra outlining steps like increasing access to medication abortion, but offering few specifics. Our Mary Bruce pressing for details. When can we expect more concrete steps to be announced? What's the holdup here? It was a long decision, uh, and it, it did upend 50 years of precedent. And so you want to make sure that what you do is within, as I said, the confines of the law. We're not interested in going rogue. The battle over abortion rights now turns to the states. At least 13 have stopped nearly all abortions. About a dozen others set to take action in the coming weeks and months. My body, my choice. Abortion rights demonstrators marching from Illinois to Iowa. We have to protect our siblings who can't. This does affect in other states. Illinois now a safe haven, surrounded by states banning or severely restricting access to abortion bracing for up to 30,000 more women to travel here over the year. Patients who are struggling to make ends meet, who are deciding, do I pay my rent or do I feed my kids? And now they have this not only added expense and time of needing an abortion, but also the time they have to take off work and the childcare and the lodging. It's really heartbreaking. So many feel that they're now without options. Our thanks to Rachel Scott, and we are joined now by former North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp and Democratic strategist Sochi Inohosa. We thank you both for joining us tonight. You're both Democrats from Red State, so want to get your read on, on a couple of major social policy issues facing the country right now. First, of course, the Supreme Court ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade. Both of your states have trigger laws in place. Senator, I'd like to start with you. This was an issue in your 2018 campaign. How are voters reacting to the ban there? You know, it's it's interesting because I think there's a whole lot of shock um, because this is a right that's been protected in the Constitution. It didn't really matter what the legislature did. It didn't matter what, uh, you know, what was happening and what the governor said because women had a constitutional right. I want to remind people because I think this gets lost. When the abortion debate is on either extreme, you lose. And in North Dakota, when we're talking about later term abortion, when you're talking about um, partial birth abortion, those are things people are not comfortable with. But it wasn't that long ago in North Dakota when we rejected a personhood bill which would have declared life at conception. Now the debate has moved there as protesters are saying protection at conception. What does that mean for the morning after pill? What does that mean for rape and incest exceptions? And it's once these things sink in, even in very red states, I think there's going to be a lot of discomfort over the real clear impacts of this decision, even in red states. I remind you, Mississippi turned back a personhood bill because the voters there were not willing to say life begins at conception. It had such, too many consequences. Such a, a slippery slope that we're all seeing now. Sochi, Texas certainly has different demographics than North Dakota, but on this issue, uh, what are you hearing? How are voters there responding? Well, I think that voters are in shock just like the rest of the country. I think that we've seen it for quite some time where Republicans in Texas are trying to roll back women's rights, women's reproductive rights. And like the senator said, there was still um, this the Roe v. Wade was there still to protect us, and I don't think it necessarily hit everyone until the decision dropped this last week. What I do want to warn folks, though, is that remember that Texas is has a large growing Latino population. If you look at the last census, the majority of the growth came from the Hispanic community, and especially in places like South Texas. And what will happen here, because of the Supreme Court decision, it will largely impact brown and black women. Um, these are women who will be disproportionately impacted by the decision. They will have to drive um, potentially thousands, hundreds or thousands of miles in order to get an abortion. Um, and we will see consequences. You will have women who will die. And so I think that over the next you know, few months um, and years, we will see the impacts of Roe v. Wade on the Hispanic community. And one thing I will say about Texans is that while um, Texans are, you know, Texas is a conservative state, I will say that Texans don't necessarily like the extreme. You've had a lot of major things happen in Texas, like 
this abortion ban. You've also had the recent shooting. There's a lot of things that are happening in Texas that are breaking communities apart. And this is just one instance where communities aren't necessarily necessarily liking what they see. And for both of you, do you see this as an issue that will influence the general elections in, in the fall in your state? Senator, I'll start with you. No, I mean, I think that uh, North Dakota is a pretty red state, redder than Texas. Um, last uh, election, we were a plus 35. And so I don't see, we're also a very pro-life state. And so I don't see this affecting North Dakota voters. I do see it affecting across the, across the Red River into Minnesota, more and more people understanding the import of this, more and more people kind of picking a side who haven't picked a side before. And so in places is where we are at like a, you know maybe a plus six Republican I think this could if if suburban women vote if young women vote if young people vote and certainly if minorities feel that their options are being limited economically I think that that this will have a base turnout I don't think this is going to be you know you're going you're not going to persuade some Republican to change their idea or their vote this is really motivation and I think in in close races this could motivate and turn the tide for Democratic candidates.